millions upon millions of children are laid alone, suffering, starving, with bed sores, confused in pain, mentally, physically, emotionally, unable to talk, unable to get up and walk away, unable to call for help. And so a child incarnates in a body which is defective, in a world which is defective. And they have parents who are defective. And they keep them alive, not out of love and compassion, but out of fear that they will be prosecuted for infanticide if they don't. And these children are there in this bubble, this cocoon of a frequency of suffering like you have never imagined. This village, it will start the journey in collective human consciousness for us to recognize and see that these millions of invisible children are here. And perhaps we might get up and go to war for them and set them free. And in setting free one child, you begin to set free fallen consciousness for all of man. It has been far too long since I shared with you all and many of you have actually written us privately expressing concern and asking if my family and I are okay. I wish to speak into another topic. I wish to speak into the importance of Yeshua and resurrection but not in the light that most see it. I want to speak into the importance of the pathway that is left for us to step outside of the energy extraction matrix, the fallen world, the elements of original creation that have been overlaid by the fallen programmer, the fallen angels, to alter this reality, to ensure that mankind passes parcels of the light of God they are, into the frequency bandwidths where the fallen ones can access it. I want to speak into the overcoming of the slave self, the alien slave technology that is embedded in all of mankind, the higher dimensional slave technology, the alteration of the human body. So as we live in a perpetual state of being animated by thought to separate from the presence and power of the Creator, of Christ. A hugely important topic, especially around this time of the year where millions ce celebrate resurrection, a story of overcoming the fallen world, the energy extraction matrix and the slave self. But how on earth can I get into this topic without first explaining where I have been. And with it, this will help me to tie into the importance of understanding the reality you are in and why those who choose the light, who choose the Christ, who walk that way, allowing their intelligence to be animated by the sacred, not by images of it, not by religious symbology, but by the feeling of it, the sacred here and now in the body. Not the idea of it here and now, but the actuality of the feeling of it. All who do so are persecuted. And the reason this channel has been so quiet is that we have been engaged in a massive spiritual warfare with a man who clearly serves the fallen ones. For he has used lies and deception meticulously to try and damage our lives, to try and frighten us away from Tanzania. He was doing so because when I returned to live here, it became apparent that a great darkness had encircled the children's lives. That darkness was a threat to their future, to their lives, to their well-being. 
and the man behind this and those that he recruited had decided to try and use the children to gain for material wealth themselves. They wished to use the children's position and situation for material gain. I, almost as if it's magnetic, cannot abide corruption and sin and deception and I automatically gravitate towards challenging it and naturally when it's the children I love I had to challenge this. However, this man persecuted me for all I have been now proven completely to be innocent. He even tried to frame me for a crime that, that I had not committed. I was detained. I, I have gone through a great deal of what could be described a living gospel the last weeks, all whilst trying only to bring love to these children. I knew I was innocent and actually the story of Yeshua assisted me in that as I thought of his innocence and his persecution for bringing this message to mankind. My apologies, I had to move slightly as I was being visited by some, some wildlife, some ants here. As I passed through this new manifestation of service, a physical manifestation of the spiritual warfare that I speak into so often, I thought of Yeshua. I thought of his persecution in his innocence and his purity. For I was framed for something I had not done, completely proven innocent. But therefore, during that trial, during that time, it was very difficult. And yet you are well aware that you cannot walk away. You cannot run away. You cannot take the coward's road and back down. You must trust with all of your faith that the truth will come to light and indeed it did and so at this time of year when so many are celebrating resurrection and they are speaking into Yeshua overcoming the world Yeshua overcoming the energy extraction matrix overcoming the fallen nature the sin nature, the slave technology embedded in all man that separates us from Creator and leaves us seeking to fill that separation, that void, with the comfortable prison cell of worldly desire. Millions will speak of Yeshua on the cross, dying for your sins and rising again. And I will get into this and how he descended into a fallen matrix, an energy extraction matrix, a corner of creation that is no longer only influenced by the programs of the creator, but by a fallen programmer and the fallen ones, this hyper advanced intelligence that has created a machine to generate energy, to give parcels of the light of God into the possession of the fallen who need that energy, need it to come to their frequency range so they can continue their sojourn of rebellion, trying to be God. I will share about this and Yeshua's descent into this chaotic world and yours and my own descent into this chaotic world, some of us with a mission to rewrite it from the inside out, I'm certain. But before I get into that, it is very important to acknowledge that there is a crucifixion and resurrection that has profound significance that is never spoken of and Christianity seems to be fearful of having this conversation. Christianity is failing to transform people. It has done a wonderful job at getting the Bible into every corner of the world, but it may not have done the best of job at interpreting it fully. And therefore the transformation of humanity is not apparent and clear. 
Christian nations are still raging war, still racked with drug addiction and perversion, still living a largely Babylonian existence. This is because the Bible is not in its original form. And in our collective gullibility, in our collective trust, our collective innocence, our collective arrogance, we have refused to acknowledge this. And yet it is evident by simply looking around that it is so. The Greeks took the Bible, story of Yeshua, and they altered it to suit their sun worship. This is a fact that cannot be escaped. And maturely it must be discussed with rationality and reason. And to work out how Therefore, this can all correlate into the transformation of man to become unified with Christ. Not that we continue to bicker in separation, duality and division, but that we manifest the power of Christ to animate our intelligence and begin changing this world. As I know Christ longs for, the source code programmer longs for that. I will not cover it too deeply as I've gone into it so often here. But it is said that the Son of Man had to be handed into the sinful hands of the children of earth, which is who we are and the earth is our home. When you look at the journey of the sun in the sky, just before Christmas it passes through the crux, the crucifix. That would be the more appropriate time that Easter was celebrated in truth. For the sun passes through the crux, the crucifix in the sky, and immediately after, it sits for three days in the shortest days of the year, the tomb. The sun descends into the earth, the pure and the holy light bearer, the only brightest light in our night sky, the only giver of light, that provides us with sustenance and life and daylight. It goes into the earth. It is handed over to the sinful nature of the God of this world, the Prince of this world. Metaphorically, when it speaks of that, it is a reality that must be discussed. For the sun enters the crux, the crux goes into the three shortest days of the year, and then it resurrects, and on Christmas day, the days start to grow longer towards summer again. Here you have the crucifixion of Jesus taking place in the night sky. 30 days after that day, the sun is baptized. Jesus is baptized at the age of 30. It's baptized in baptismo, now known as Aquarius. The sun passes the constellation Aquarius. After this, Yeshua meets Simon and Andrew, the fishermen who become his disciples, biblically. This is the beginning of 12 disciples. We have 12 constellations. We have one son and 12 constellations. We have one son of God, Yeshua, and 12 disciples. After the sun is in Aquarius, 30 days after Christmas, it enters Pisces, the two fish. That's why Yeshua meets Simon and Andrew. The story has been reconfigured in some way. Either that or you can say that the journey of the brightest light in the night sky and in the day I should say is also the journey of the brightest light in human form but either way these correlations are not open for debate they are a fact they are a simple reality and they move very well and synchronistically and only the entanglement of our arrogance and rejection of truth can make it seem more complicated than it is there is a metaphorical coincidence the story of Jesus and the procession of the Son. It does not harm Yeshua or his message or his sacrifice. But beyond there, there is yet another crucifixion. For Jesus dies at the age of 33 in Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull. In the human organism, we have a Christ within us, an anointing, a sacred secretion. The Bible says that I have anointed you with the oil of gladness, for you have hated wickedness and loved righteousness. 
This oil of gladness is mankind's ability to harmonically attune with the higher mind and overcome the sin nature, that which drags us into persistent worldly indulgence. The chrism, the Christ within you, travels 33 vertebrae, enters the skull, sits in the thalamus for three days, and then it is resurrected between the pituitary and the pineal, and you begin to hear the Holy Spirit and the Christ if you have not burnt up this volatile and precious substance by pursuing the pleasures of the world over maintain, maintaining the energy that you have, the vitality you have, to allow the will of the sacred to animate your life, intelligence and speech. Jesus is crucified at Golgotha, the place of the skull. He takes five wounds. If you don't overcome your five senses, you will serve the world and its pleasures. If you overcome the five senses, your energy will ascend, it will enter your skull, Golgotha, and it will be resurrected. And as Jacob said, I have seen God face to face, and I call that place Peniel. As Jesus said, let thy eye be single, your whole body will fill with light. The pituitary and the Peniel is the elevation of the frequency, and therefore, the ability to decode a land, larger bandwidth of reality is manifest through that alchemical change, that chemical change within you. This is the Christ within. And the same story of Yeshua is the light of the night, the light of the sun as well. It is also the light within you, the Christ in us all. You see, the Bible is not in its original form, and we have largely misunderstood it. Let thy eye be single, and your whole body will fill with light. Your pineal gland has a retina within it. The tribe of Judah camped in the east, where the sun rises. Their number was 186,400. The speed of light in a vacuum is 186,400 miles per second. There is a deep wisdom and scientific knowledge and blessing in the scriptures that have been sidestepped and made into nothing but historical context, historical stories. Yet the reality is this. Yeshua, we are told, died for your sins. This means we are told that the only way that God could work out how to forgive humanity was to take a price of blood and torment and torture and put it on his son. And this is a very heavy ideology. It also changes the notion of death leading to paradise. For we, we discuss within that narrative that Yeshua was killed for your sins, as if being killed, as if dying is the very worst possible thing. I want to reframe this momentarily. Due to all that I've gone through and seen, and walking in the light of Christ, not the image of Christ, not the image of God, but the presence. I know the feeling of God versus the idea of God in my head, and the two were not the same at all. But in doing so, I have seen that mankind has a problem. For mankind relates to the image they have of God over God. Mankind worships the image they create of God in thought and memory and symbology and religious and spiritual paraphernalia. We relate to the image thought conjures over the actual sensation of the living God with us here and now. And the sensation, the presence of the living God, is where we are guided. For the sensation to manifest in your cells means that you are in humility. You are in humility for there is no one there to dictate and determine what reality in God is. God so guides the humble. What is more humble? than a man who stands before all creation, lovingly aware, without labels or understanding, admitting he knows nothing, 
and awaiting the divine to animate his life. The two are very different. And so when we speak of Yeshua and we speak of this sacrifice, I have seen walking in that way that we live in a world that is not as it was. The source code programmer created a beautiful world, but within there, a split in consciousness, a rebellious state of being appeared and manifest. And it said, I wish to become God. And I will become God through analysis. And I will persistently analyze as many fragments of reality as possible until I become almost like a super being, a false creator God. And I will input all of that information into AI, perhaps, for all we know, and it will manage and run all of the information that I've dissected about creator. And therefore, I can begin to interfere with reality by running my own simulated elements within it. And I don't do this only for fun, for I do it to extract energy, to take souls that we are into Maya, the illusion that we live within, to take souls that we are into the fallen matrix of extraction and make us go against our soul nature and instead go into selfishness and pursuit of pleasure for self-gain and, and to fill the void of the distance we feel by believing the matrix we are in. This false creator God, this group of fallen angels, they come forward with great power and with great intelligence and great technology, for I have seen them and I've spoke about them on this channel. And they are here from the lower astral realms of the dimensions and they are feeding on humanity and extracting energy from humanity. As that is understood, then you see there is a greater reality. And within that greater reality, there is a lesser reality where we are. And in that lesser reality, changes need to be made. And to change it, we must be able to come within with a connection to the source code programmer. For within that smaller reality, the, on the outskirts of it is the fallen programmer. And it programs from great knowledge, but great ignorance. And the source code programmer is all knowing. And so it can anticipate all that it does. And therefore children with a great connection to the source code must enter. But as soon as they do, the codes from the fallen one begin to target them, to try and hurt them, to, to kill them and maim them, whatever it may be. And so when the source code the dimension of the Creator, the realm of the Christ, said, I must change this. It does not get my vote. It makes the decision to send its son, a child so close to it, into this reality. And I'm certain the angels called on God and said, do you realize what will happen? Do you realize how brutal and realistic the Mayan fallen simulation is? Do you know the pain and suffering that is in there? And God would say, I know it well. That's why this must happen for my other children who do not know me as well and connection to me is not as clear are being recycled inside here in this perceivably eternal trap of suffering. And so they make the decision to allow the Christ to descend into this human extraction matrix and upon his dis descent they were aware they knew what the outcome would be they knew it would be great suffering and as Yeshua grew to to develop his mind and be able to connect back to the source he too will have known and this is difficult this is difficult for when you serve with only the hope to bring love only the want to bring love to humanity in the instance of ourselves only wanting to help suffering disabled children and you are targeted this is tremendously difficult but even Yeshua could not escape that 
Even Yeshua could not escape the influence of the fallen programmer over the source code programmer. But rest assured, when Yeshua got here and saw the programs of the source code programmer coming in, he called on the program codes of the origin of all things which have more power than this guy's programs, these guy's programs, and began to delete sickness and suffering immediately. And I am here with certainty that from within here we are able to somehow transcend harmonically back to the source code and bring in those program codes and rewrite reality. And I am not perfect at it by any measure, but it is thanks to Yeshua and his message and his sacrifice to bring that message into this fallen world that there is even a pathway to reconnect to the source code. And reconnecting we must, for this must blossom inwardly. It can't be altered from the outside, it must be altered from the inside, as with all things. I therefore give great thanks to Yeshua and his sacrifice. For it is true that unless you follow the way that Yeshua left, live the way that Yeshua left, then you will not enter a harmonic resonance with the source code deep enough that allows you to bring those program codes in here and write over the lesser programmer. Most do not grasp this and therefore what happens is that instead of going through that process of harmonic attunement to the source code to rewrite this reality and challenge these higher dimensional beings feeding off of us and creating their own hacked version of reality here, we begin to worship not the source code through harmonic resonance unity with it, but from within here the image of Yeshua. And we only stand with that image for many. And this means that we develop a religious identity. And that religious identity, guaranteed as it is a self, will pursue self-interest. And so instead of elevating to a frequency like this, where you can access the source code, due to the development of a, a personal meanness and a personal history, mind as the master, that frequency is not enough. And it wavers and so connection to the source code is less and less frequent and therefore we resonate with inside the fallen world and hence we have billions of Christians and humanity is yet to have been transformed. We have billions of Christians and very few are able to cast out the higher dimensional beings afflicting their fellow man and yet Yeshua promised that they would and this is because they believe in an image more than knowing the presence of the Christ in their selves. Harmonic attunement to the source code or dwelling within here in a limited bandwidth and perception of reality, worshipping the image alone. And the image of God is not the presence of God in yourselves. Thoughts about God stories about God, they are not the movement of God animating your body. This is profoundly important. We have this terrible habit that we think that words and thoughts are the thing. Words and thoughts are pointing you and the true journey is to see that which they point you toward and transcend this fallen world and exit this fallen world. And this is why we fast. This is why we fast, for when we fast we lighten and we disconnect from the five senses. We overcome the anchors to the fallen matrix and we elevate outside of the source codes, competitions program, the fallen programmer. We elevate out of it and we see the greater reality beyond the world and its comfortable prison cell of worldly desires. And then we come back in with a great memory of it and we recognize what we must become. We recognize how we must alter this reality. And the problem 
is that when we celebrate things like Easter, which is, it's not biblical of course, but we celebrate resurrection. We celebrate Yeshua overcoming sin in the world for humanity to follow the same road. The problem when we do this is that we don't take our fellow man and say to them, your functionality in this world should not at the very foundation of it be based on your nationality. Most say I'm American, I'm English, I'm Tanzanian. Then I am an academic achievement. Then I am a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a daughter, a son. Then I am a Christian. And therefore you have these structures inside thought that tell you how you function in this world and you add Christian as a structure in thought as well. But to be born again, all of that must be wiped out and a new supernatural stance of in this world must take over. This means that you must come to the place where you understand that your influence on this reality is not merely through speech and movement of your hands, but your influence on this reality is through the ability to rewrite, to reprogram it. And this is your greatest power as a human. And you reprogram it by escaping the catchment of the fallen programmer, which is the heavy frequencies of sin and worldly pleasure. We fast and we disconnect and we transcend beyond its reach. And then through the union with the source code programmer in prayer, you rewrite reality. This is humanity's greatest power. And this is what the enemy fears the most, for there you overcome the world. There you overcome the higher dimensional slave technology. But the knowledge of good and evil operating system that dwells in all man and masks the Eden operating system, that operating system is constantly looking to structure an image of what it is to separate you from God. So as you look into Christianity, it will structure an image of a Christian inside your head. And that image alone is not the presence of God within you. So that image can actually distance you from the Creator. For the sacred is found only in the spaces between thought and language, in humility, in the spaciousness of being lovingly aware and admitting you don't know and awaiting the divine will to show you, therefore. We must learn the other depths, therefore, of resurrection and crucifixion. We must learn to activate our higher mind through the preservation of the sacred secretion. For there we open the bandwidth of reality that we function with, that they have restricted from us in our enslavement. And in that space you begin to wage war for God in this reality, through the spirit of love and unity not anger, and division, separation, and rivalry. You're here to overcome the world. You're here to overcome the fallen nature, the slave self. And when you fast and you disconnect from this reality, you will meet the Christ there, and it will take over your life. It will bring about a change in you. you Yeshua's death on the cross opened the door for this. He came into this fallen world to bring those program codes within of the Christ. And we now have access to them. We now have an intermediary between the outside of the fallen world and the inside. We call it the Holy Spirit. And if you make sure that you live well and you love righteousness and hate wickedness, you will reverberate in a frequency range where it can speak to you, where it can minister to you, where it can guide you. And that space is not attained through the knowledge of good and evil operating system. It is attained by making that go to sleep. And that cannot be made to go to sleep by itself. It is indomitable belief and faith 
that cancels the thought system and allows you to stand before all creation lovingly aware and the more lovingly aware you are of all creation the more rapid forgiveness is the more transmutation of healing you will bring and the more ability to purify the fallen ones you will have for in that space you are no longer afflicted with a personal meanness and history you become therefore an open channel to bring the power of Christ into this world unrefracted by your thought for as he was in this world so are we and you must die for Christ to be born and you yourself must be crucified and the self that must be crucified is the personal history and meanness that operates not in a supernatural Christic manner and when all of that takes place in the same way Yeshua was persecuted in his innocence so too are we for the fallen programmer despises the love we bring for that love is its death that love is its end and so we must be valiant and stand in that love and know the target is on us and in faith and awareness resist the temptation to fight and know the frequency of that love will set you free from all persecution where God can make it so. Thank you, Yeshua, for all you did. Thank you, everyone, for all you do for the manifestation of Christ's work we see in our family. God bless, guys, and blessed Easter. Bye. I was at the hospital last night with one of the children. He went into a series of uh, very violent seizures and just wouldn't stop. So we took him and I was thinking about you guys. I was thinking some of these people will just be waking up now and making their breakfast completely oblivious to the fact that because in their heart they decided to reach out and share with what we're doing for these children here. I was able to have fuel in my car and to be able to drive to the hospital with money for the bills to make sure that Joshua could get the treatment to put a stop to his seizures. Without intervention, he would have seizured possibly until death or until irreparable brain damage last night. And this place only exists because of you guys. And you have no idea what you've just done. At every given moment, I can't share what is happening, but every given moment, when you share with us, you're the one healing them. That's what I was thinking while I was driving. While you're sleeping in your bed, while going about your daily work, oblivious to the idea that you're saving a child's life here. Pretty amazing. God bless you.